I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Wednesday, February the 16th, brought to you in part by Margin Tracks by Midcon. The system that you've been waiting for, you can keep a continually updated snapshot of your cattle margin, your hedge margin, and your net margin at your fingertips. Visit midconcattle.com or scan the QR code to request a demo. Easy Street, are we on Easy Street now? It seems like everything's just coming up roses. Uh, uh, these calves and yearlings are selling like hotcakes. Uh, fat cattle market's been gaining ground. Our board's been friendly. We know we've got tight supplies of market ready cattle. We know that our, our inventory on cows is down. Our calf crop is smaller. Uh, we haven't kept hardly any uh, beef replacement heifers back. And a guy can get all caught up in that and just think, my gosh, you know, this is just, let's just roll the dice and leave everything out there. But we need to wait just a minute and look out here down the road a little bit. Now we have, our feedlots are slam full because there's been no place to, to run any cattle outside uh, this winter for the most part. So our feedlots are absolutely slam packed. So we got to be thinking of when are those cattle going to come out? Well, a lot of them are going to be coming out uh, here early this summer. You know, they, they would have been outside uh, getting cheap gain, but they, they ran out of wheat, they ran out of uh, stockpile grass, people didn't have enough hay to hold them back, and they put them in the feedlot. Well, those cattle went on feed lighter, but they're gaining more pounds uh, being in that yard than what they normally would have been gaining being out and they're gonna they're gonna hit the market quicker so normally we can depend on august uh, being a real downer with so many cattle uh coming out of the feed yard and and they're all coming out because everybody's spring calves but uh we can think maybe that those might come out a little bit earlier so we've got some time to make hay here some really uh tight numbers of market ready cattle between now and, and may uh, but after that uh, it's it's going to be kind of a, a toss-up on when, when those cattle are going to come and how heavy they're going to come and uh, You know how heavy a volume I mean is are they going to come and will we be able to hold our market position? So we need to be getting that market position put together right now uh, Here for the next uh, couple of months, uh, but uh, it, we've got a hunk to get over guys now granted whenever we get over that big hunk or big hump there's going to be fewer of cattle to go on feed. Uh, you know, guys uh, are going to have to make the decision on whether they can afford to keep heifers back or whether they need the money. Uh, and then we're going to, uh, we're probably going to see, uh, you know, progressively lighter uh, inventories until people start getting it uh, figured out and getting our, our numbers built back up. But uh, I would say we at least probably got uh, four more good years here. Uh, of light supplies but uh, we need to don't get caught uh, with your pants down there uh, early this summer if we get a lot of cattle coming uh, to the market and we don't have uh, enough uh, demand to offset those but uh, right now we're seeing uh, all kinds of records being posted on our slaughter cattle choice and better grading is at an all-time record high right now and then you would as you would have guessed also our uh, our weights carcass weights are near an all-time record they're a record for this time of year they're near an all-time record uh you know in the top three or, or four or five uh as far as uh weeks there but uh, we've got big big cattle coming i have to believe that those weights are going to come down uh, with this uh high high cost of gain and uh, the grains getting so high so that's going to come down uh our grading percent is going to come down Packers are not going to be nearly as happy with what they're buying out there. Uh, our choice select spread is going to grow. It's only two and a half dollars right now, which is nothing. I was talking to a, a guy up in Nebraska that was telling me about uh, some, putting some cattle in on the grid, and, and I was asking him how they grade, and he says, we don't really care how they grade. As long as they yield all right, uh, you know, they got a, a nice weight carcass on there, we don't really care. It doesn't make that big a difference. So. Uh, you know that's that's going to change as our as our weights get down, as feed gets high, our grading goes down. I still believe and and know in my heart that this grading has gotten so good 
since the onset of the instrument grading. And, uh, you know, the graders don't stand on the line uh, hardly any anymore. Uh, the Packers own the cameras, the imaging instruments that take a picture of that ribeye, and it does the grading for it. Uh, it doesn't have a conscience and uh, any kind of a uh, fat speck whenever they, they uh, cut that uh, eye open there. If it's laying on there, it looks like marbling to the camera. And, uh, and it's, the, the grading is just way better ever since all the big plants got uh, instrument grading. But uh, nobody's complaining about the instrument grading. Uh, the, the meat graders can sit on their ass in the office. They're overseeing that, but they, they can sit in, in the office. They don't have to stand out on the line. Uh, the, the packers love it because they're getting a you know, better grading carcass there. And, uh, you know, your, your cattle people love it because their cattle are grading so good and they think they're doing such a good job with genetics and feeding and all that. And uh, the only one that's really getting screwed is a consumer because they don't know any better. Let's talk about your board for Tuesday. February live cattle futures up 47 cents. Pretty much gained back everything that it lost uh, or on Monday there, but uh, or actually it was better on Monday. Uh, get, you know, we're, we're sitting pretty good with what we lost late last week, but February live cattle futures up 47 at 142.90. April was up 55 cents at 146.90. Going your back months up 27 to up 67. March feeder cattle up a buck 85 at 168.72. April's up a dollar five at 172.55. You want to look down the line, guys. You can lock your yearlings in uh, on a on a uh, insurance policy there at uh, LRP at a really really handsome price. It doesn't cost a lot of money to do it, and then you won't have to worry about them uh, all spring and all summer. How about your back months of your feeder cattle up up a dollar twenty to up a dollar seventy five? Grains were all down big. Corn down 17 three quarter cent at 638. Beans down 18 and three quarter cent at 1551 a quarter. Kansas City hard red winter wheat down 22 and a half at 806. Fat cattle trade has not really began yet. We didn't see hardly any confirmed sales on Tuesday. Uh, you know, and I hope that's because guys are kind of uh, sinking their feet in and wanting to gain some of that market position we talked about. But uh, Iowa just had a load of mixed cattle there confirmed. Nebraska only about 400 head at 142. Uh, we did, uh, I did hear of uh, 223 bids out there from the regionals, uh, pretty widespread in the Northern Plains, but uh, j just very, very quiet so far after a big volume uh, trade of negotiated last week, but they'll be coming in there. Uh, it'd be nice if we had a minimum mandate uh, the guys would, wouldn't have to worry. They'd be comfortable waiting, knowing that the Packers were going to come in and buy some cattle. Box beef cutout values were lower. Uh, that mixed day on Monday did not show uh, any any more stability there, but choice cuts were down 359 at 270.37. That's what happens when your cattle are grading an all-time record high choice and prime. But uh, selects were down 93 cents is all at 267.82. And as I mentioned a while ago, your choice select spread is only $2.55 a hundred. Uh, your slaughter, uh, pretty aggressive going through here. We're not seeing any problems with the uh, latest variant of your, uh, of your COVID. The guys are getting back to work. They got the chains turned up. Things are going well. 123,000 harvested uh, as an estimation on Tuesday. So far through the week, 244,000. That's 1,000 more than last week. And, uh, and a year ago this week, we only had 169,000 so far because of a storm that blew through. So uh, it's going to be hard to uh, really test against there. But uh, talk about what else is going on. Check out Farmington Regional Stockyards in Farmington, Missouri. That's southeast Missouri. But they've got really good cattle down there, especially when they have one of their uh, pre-vac sales. They, they have those on the first and third uh, Wednesday there. They've got one here today and it's going to be one of their biggest ones. They were expecting around 1,200 head. Uh, now it's looking like they're going to have about 2,000. They've got uh, you know 80 to 90 percent of those cattle are going to be pre-vac cattle. They're going to uh, qualify for one of the programs that they 
uh, that they recognize they're going to have some really reputation consignments locally, some home raised cattle and some uh, local backgrounded cattle that were bought at real, real peewee weights and, and uh, those cattle will be foolproof guys. But uh, really, really nice offering of cattle. Uh, be several load lots in uh, some of those bigger reputation cattle and then they're going to have lots and lots of uh, medium sized bunches of kind of those middleweight calves that have been long weaned 60 days or more and had two rounds of shots uh, some of them been down from that country are going to have a take a continental cross in them be just right if you guys want to buy something to turn out in the Flint Hills uh, now, by the time it's a uh, turnout date, they'll have a tick of age to them. Uh, they won't even remember what their mother looked like, and they will be ready to absolutely explode. But check out dvauction.com and go on to Farmington Regional Stockyards, Farmington, Missouri. Uh, get on there, get, get a hold of them, talk to them, and view and bid that sale at Farmington Regional Stockyards here today on Wednesday. How about your, uh, your feeder cattle markets for Tuesday? Uh, your real-time index by, brought to you by Margin Tracks by Midcon uh, ended the day or late in the day on Tuesday at 161.50. I was down another 30 cents and some of your heavier weight feeders uh, are, are they just kind of hit a wall. They can't get any higher uh, and frankly it was easier to see cattle weighing into fives bring two dollars a pound than it was eights bringing 160. Now they'll both do it pretty readily but uh, it's easier uh, for those five weight calves to bring a one tw or two dollars a pound than it is uh, to get your cattle weighing in the eights to 160 even though uh, we had a couple of weeks there where they were doing it real easy but your 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 live cattle futures hasn't been as wild as your feeder cattle futures so especially on your out front month so there's not quite as much to go out and, and hitch to there let's talk about your uh, your sales around the circuit there on Tuesday Ozarks Regional Stockyard West Plains, Missouri, about 3,750 head of cattle, plus another 900 plus on their in-house video that they do with help from DV Auction. Uh, but look at their trend there. This is a mid-session trend, wouldn't change a whole lot there. But feeders, steady to firm, calves 10 to 15 bucks higher. And sure wouldn't uh, doubt that at all. They hadn't had a really big sale there at, at West Plains for a couple of weeks due to the weather conditions, but uh, pretty good size sale there on Tuesday. How about Rezac Livestock Commission in St. Mary's, Kansas? Uh, over 2,100 head of feeders there, uh, and it was mostly higher on, on uh, your bulkier sales there, but except for your nine weight steers, and, and we just talked about those heavier steers, they're backing off of them a little bit, and some of your middleweight heifer calves. Uh, we're not quite as high as they were last week, but stick out deal there at Denny Rezac Livestock Commission. 56 head, 628 pound steers, bring $192 in St. Mary's, Kansas. How about some other individual quotes? Miles City Livestock Commission, 104 head, 525 pound steers, 217 and a quarter. How about Cattlemen's Livestock Auction in Harrison, Arkansas? Uh, we got to talk about the eastern market sometimes too, but they sell bunches at Harrison. How about 78 head, 691 pound steers, uh, bring 169.75 standing in the ring, Harrison, Arkansas. How about uh, Fredonia, Kansas? There, got a lot of friends around there. Brad Hahn and company, uh, Fredonia Livestock Auction. They had a really nice sale, including the Wedman cattle there from Beaumont, Kansas. Wing 90 days, 110 head, 492 pound steers. Now that's just almost 500 pounds at 231. Wow, Fredonia, Kansas. How about Beaver County Stockyards, Beaver, Oklahoma? I told you on the last visit they were going to have some really nice big nine weight cattle in there and they sold awful well too. But 100 head, 942 pound steers in the Oklahoma Panhandle at 153 and a quarter. A lot of people's eight weights didn't bring any more than that, guys. But the best quote that I saw anywhere on Tuesday, your National Beef Wire top quote for the day, come out of Kimball Livestock Exchange, Kimball, South Dakota, 73 head, 798 pound steers at 174.85. And that's your feeder flash for Wednesday.